What is a sugar glider? Where do they come from? Sugar gliders are small marsupials in the same general family as a kangaroo or koala bear. They are originally from the rainforests of Australia and Indonesia and have been domestically bred as household pets in the United States for the last 12 to 15 years. They got the name sugar glider because they like to eat almost anything sweet, especially fresh fruit and vegetables. And they have a gliding membrane, similar to a flying squirrel, that stretches from their wrist to their ankles, allowing them to glide, not fly, from tree to tree. Do they make good pets? Are they rodents? A sugar glider is not a rodent. They are marsupials, in the same general family as a kangaroo or koala bear. As such, they are proven to have several distinct advantages over other household pets, such as hamsters, gerbils, ferrets, squirrels, etc. For example, when cared for properly, their lifespan is typically 12 to 15 years, similar to many dogs or cats. They also have roughly the same intelligence as a dog, in that when trained properly, they can learn their name, come when they're called, and even do tricks. Another distinct advantage over rodent-type pets is that sugar gliders, when fed the proper diet, have almost no noticeable smell. They also keep themselves impeccably clean and never require bathing. One of the biggest problems of owning any rodent as a household pet, i.e. mice, hamsters, gerbil, etc., is that they are destructive by nature and constantly have to chew on things. This is because all rodents have teeth that constantly grow and therefore must be worn down. Since sugar gliders are not rodents, they do not instinctively need to chew on things and are not destructive by nature. Probably one of the most unique things about sugar gliders as household pets is how strongly and permanently they bond to their human families. Once they are fully bonded to you and your family, they can go almost everywhere with you in public without being caged – shopping, groceries, movies, etc. And they will not want to leave your shoulder or pocket. In this aspect, especially, they have exactly the opposite mentality of a rodent, in that, once they are fully trained and bonded with you, they normally won't hide or run away because they instinctively want to be with their family more than anything else. What about sugar glider food? One of the funniest questions we often get is that people sometimes hear that feeding a sugar glider and giving them proper nutrition is an extremely costly and time-consuming process. In reality, nothing could be further from the truth. Over the years, we've come across sites that claim it costs as much as $2,000 per year to feed a single glider, and that any owner who cares about their gliders will spend several hours a day chopping exotic fruits, gathering live insects, and preparing extremely complicated and expensive meals for them. Well, to be quite frank, these are the same kind of people who dress their poodles up in $1,000 costumes, and then claim that anyone who doesn't do the same is somehow neglecting their animals. They're certainly entitled to their opinions, but you can judge for yourself what is appropriate. In the wild, sugar gliders eat a variety of different foods depending on the season. They are omnivores. And as pets, they are often fed specific diets that are recommended by experts in zoos. They are blended diets using baby food, honey, fruits, vitamins, and other ingredients, and then supplemented with fresh items such as fruit, vegetables, and insects. Formulated, prepackaged diets for sugar gliders do exist at pet stores and online, but they are not recommended as a staple diet since they are not nutritionally complete. The needs of sugar gliders have changed as more is learned about them. Where do they go to the bathroom? Contrary to what some people believe, sugar gliders cannot technically be potty trained. However, the good news is that they are extremely clean and very predictable little animals. For example, even as babies, they instinctively will never want to poop or pee where they sleep. This means that they will rarely go to the bathroom when they are in your pockets, unless of course they can't get out and have an accident. How big do they get? Baby sugar gliders are called joeys, just like kangaroos, and they are about the size of a grain of rice when they are born. They spend the first few weeks of their lives in their mother's pouch, again like a kangaroo. And fully grown, they are about 5 to 7 inches in length, not including their tail, and weigh about 6 ounces. Sugar gliders, like other exotic pets, have a multitude of ailments that can affect them. Metabolic bone disease due to inappropriate nutrition, injuries from getting stuck and gliding, diarrhea from eating too much fruit, and parasites are all commonly seen in pet sugar gliders. How much time do they require? As mentioned earlier, one of the most unique things about sugar gliders as household pets is how strongly they bond to their human families. 
Bonding is a process that can take anywhere from a few days to two or three months. And just like human children, no two gliders are the same. Which is better, male or female? Unlike ferrets or other animals where one gender can be more aggressive than the other, both male and female sugar gliders have equally sweet temperaments. Just like human children, every baby has its unique personality. And, again, just like with children, how much time you spend with them when they're young determines their temperament much more than gender. Having said that, two or more boys or girls will usually get along just fine in the same cage, simply because they are instinctive colony animals and love having the companionship. Temperament and Behavior Sugar gliders are very social and need companionship. This makes them bond well to their owners, especially if you use a bonding pouch. But even if you can provide a lot of attention and spend the necessary time with your glider, keeping a single glider is not ideal. Sugar gliders have a language all their own and live in colonies of up to 30 gliders in the wild. Housing a glider by themselves can lead to behavioral, mental, and emotional, and even physical problems for your pet. Strongly consider keeping more than one glider, if not several of them, in a flight cage. Humans cannot offer the same type of companionship and socialization that other sugar gliders can provide to each other. The vocalizations, grooming, and bonding that they provide for each other are irreplaceable by a human. How cold can they get? For example, since most homes keep their thermostats set in the mid to low 70s, we always include a heat rock as a part of the cage setup. This heat rock acts like a furnace in their house, and you just leave it plugged in all the time. Since they're not rodents, they won't typically chew on the cord, and if they ever happen to get cold while in their cage, they'll just snuggle up close to it. Now, whenever they're outside of their cage, a fully bonded sugar glider will almost always be hanging out somewhere on your body. Since their natural body temperature is 99 degrees Fahrenheit and ours is 99 degrees Fahrenheit, we are just one big heater to them. Therefore, if they ever get cold, they will just climb inside your shirt or pocket and use your body heat to stay warm. They are just extremely intelligent little animals, and they make excellent year-round companions in almost any climate. Do sugar gliders make a lot of noise? Sugar gliders are nocturnal by nature, meaning that they generally like to stay up at night. However, you can train them, like a child, to be on whatever schedule fits your lifestyle. Over the years, we have found that most people like to leave their gliders nocturnal because this way, when they are at work or school, the gliders are just sleeping and not missing their owners. Then when you get home, the gliders are happy to see you. If you can carry your gliders with you during the day, they are even happier, since they get to sleep in your pocket or pouch and be with their mom or dad at the same time. Since they naturally like to play in their cage at night like little acrobats, the main thing you will still want to consider, as far as noise goes, is the type of toys you get them. Gliders typically do not make much noise themselves, but they will play with whatever you put in their cage. Thanks for checking out our video. Make sure to like and subscribe.